Hey guys, today I'm going to be taking a look at a Linux distribution that I have actually never heard of until like yesterday. Uh, one of our viewers here, uh, Carl, Carl Schneider, you guys probably know him. He comments a lot on my channel and a lot of other Linux YouTube channels. He uh, sometimes appears on the Big Daddy Linux Live podcast. Carl's a great guy. And uh, he mentioned in a comment on one of my posts that I should check out Scion Linux. Scion Linux is Ubuntu based and it uses OpenBox. And pretty much that is all I got <laughs> for information. Uh, Carl mentions that he has used it in a live USB stick and he thought it was pretty buggy, but he hasn't really looked at it in a VM or on a physical hardware on an actual install. So I thought I would go ahead and download Scion Linux and take a look at it. Uh, go ahead and install this in a virtual machine. Again, the only thing I know is that it's based on Ubuntu. It uses OpenBox. They consider it a uh, beta release, so it, it is it's going to have some bugs probably. Uh, and that the uh, creator of this particular Linux distri distribution is a guy that goes by the name Dorian.slash. The other thing I'll mention is that the uh, ISO size, I downloaded the ISO, it was 1,003 megabytes, so just a hair under 1 gig. Of course, 1 gig is 1024 megabytes. Alright, so I'm installing this in a VM. I'm just going to let it boot directly into the live desktop environment. Again, I don't know much about this project. There's actually not much on it. Uh, it's hosted on SourceForge, but the SourceForge page really doesn't give me any real information. Again, basically all I know is it's Ubuntu, it has OpenBox on it, and it's probably going to have some bugs. It is beta software. Uh, looks like, though, a lot of people are interested in this project. Uh, downloads just this week from SourceForge, 453 downloads this week. So, that's not bad. Uh, definitely some interest in this. And I can understand I'm interested in it. Uh, you guys know I love OpenBox. And, you know, there are a ton of OpenBox distros based on Debian. There are a ton of OpenBox distros based on Arch. Oddly enough, when you think about the bajillion distros that are based off of Ubuntu, there's really not a lot of Ubuntu-based OpenBox distros. Uh, and I'm not sure why that is. So this is the Scion live desktop environment. Is it open box? Yeah. Using open box in the live environment. Pretty cool. Looks like we have a panel at the top, probably the tent two panel. And the clipboard. Let's see if I can find the installer. Do they have the installer here in the menu? Probably under system tools maybe. I'm not seeing the installer. Hmm, may take me a second to find the installer. I don't know, I can't find any kind of installer in their menu system. I've, I've searched the whole thing. I thought maybe it would be under system tools. It's not, it's not under preferences, but I looked through all the categories here. Uh, maybe it's in the control panel, but clicking the control panel doesn't launch anything, so that's kind of a, a dead link there. So maybe I just need to reboot this VM and see if I can, un uh, there was an install option maybe in the boot menu. Let's reboot the machine. Let's see, if there, what kind of options did we have in the boot menu? No, there's no uh, installer in the boot menu. All we have is live, boot the live system, which is what we did the first time. X-Force VESA boots live in safe graphics mode. Then of course you have your MEM test and then boot from hard disk. So. So we have to go to the live environment, but I, there's no installer that I can find. Surely you can install this on physical hardware. I don't think it's just a live uh, disk and that's it. I guess I'm an idiot because now I'm looking through the menus and under preferences, it does say install Scion 18-2-1604. So I guess I missed it the first time. Oh well. That's my fault. Uh, of course, you know, searching through the menu, it would be nice if maybe they had a quick launcher on the Tent2 panel. That would be just a few seconds of 
adding an adding an icon by default on the panel that you could just click to launch the installer. Might be something the Scion guys look into, or even putting an icon on the desktop. So it looks like this thing is possibly based on Ubuntu 16.04, since it included 16.04 in the uh, name of the installer. Anyway, uh, English has been chosen as our language. Click Continue. Uh, download updates while installing Scion 18.2. I probably should. The ISO is a couple of months old. Uh, install third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi. Yes, you always need those third-party uh, drivers for your graphics card, Wi-Fi, uh, multimedia codecs to play video and, and things. So for a proper desktop experience in an Ubuntu or Ubuntu-based distro, you really need to take on install third-party software. All right, I'm going to erase disk and install Scion 18.2. For those that want to do any kind of manual partitioning, you could choose something else here to set up the partitions manually. I'm just going to let Scion do automatic partitioning. It's going to create an extended four file system. It's also going to create a swap. All right, time zone. It's correctly chosen the central time zone in the U.S. for me. Keyboard layout, it is correctly chosen English US for me. I can test this out in the uh, little test field here. We need to create a user. I'm going to call my user DT. I need to create a password here. I'm going to create a, a very difficult to guess password. Log in automatically. I'm not going to tick that on. I'll, I want to be asked for a password to log in. Uh, encrypt my home folder. I'm not going to do that here in this VM. And it's installing, copying files. Some kind of graphical gl glitch here. Why is there a button called skip? Kind of like in the middle of this window here. But I'm assuming the install is going to continue and hopefully everything works when we re reboot the machine at the end. All right, it looks like the installation is completed. It says installation is finished. You can continue testing Scion 18.2 now, but until you restart the computer, any changes you make or documents you save will not pre be preserved. So anytime you install an operating system, you have to reboot the machine, and I'm going to do that right now. All right, so I've rebooted the machine and uh, got our grub menu here. Let's see how long it takes for Scion 18.2 to boot up. I really like the uh, the splash screen there. That was really nice. Mm. Something's kind of glitchy here. Probably the VirtualBox guest editions. Looks like it's trying to go full screen, but it just can't. It just keeps going back to this the smaller resolution here. Okay. This is not a good sign here. I've been waiting a few seconds for something to come up other than this black screen. I'm going to pause the video for, for a minute. I'll wait 30 seconds, maybe 60 seconds, see what happens here. All right, uh, uh, something obviously is broken here. It's just a black screen, so you're in VirtualBox, usually Control and F1 will get us to a prompt. Well, it gets us to a login here. Let me log in to the, to the shell. I'm going to do a quick sudo apt update and and sudo apt upgrade uh, just to see if updating the system fixes anything. You'd be surprised how many times just a simple update will fix some problems. Now it was supposed to update the system when I did the installation because I ticked that on in the Ubiquiti installer to update the system during the install process. But it obviously didn't because there are 86 packages that need to be upgraded. So I'm going to pause the video for a few minutes. Okay, I finished that update and there were some pretty significant uh, portions to that update. Uh, Grub needed an update. Um, there were a few other things, uh, various uh, slash Etsy like config files. Uh, anyway, I'm going to do a sudo reboot and see what happens. All right, so Grub is working. That's great. Let's see if we get past this next point here. The splash screen is still kind of wigging out a little bit. Something's not right here. And then a black screen. 
Yeah. You know what? As much as I hate to do it, we may end up having to take a look at this thing. Just looking at the live desktop environment, I, don't, I usually like to install them and take a look at them. You know, but I, I may just run the live disk. So I'm going to drop back down into the shell here. Let me log back in. Of course, I can reboot the machine. But one more thing I want to try. I'm just going to type start X and see if that just loads us straight into the open box window manager. It does. So I'm assuming we were supposed to have some kind of login manager, though. I, I guess it's maybe the login manager that's causing the problem. Uh, I don't, maybe they're using light DM. I'm not sure. But just bypassing the login manager and just going straight into our open box session here, that works. Anyway, Scion, out of the box, pretty cool wallpaper, pretty cool logo. I like the, the sun and, you know, four planets here. Uh, yeah, I even like the name, Scion Linux. Pretty neat, pretty neat branding there. So I'm going to go through the menu system. Now that we have our standard right-click menu here in OpenBox. We also have this launcher here on the Tent2 panel that also launches the exact same menu. This is your OpenBox right-click menu. So under Applications, under Accessories, we have Galculator. Uh, what a horrible name, Galculator. But it is a standard calculator app. Mousepad. Mousepad is your standard text editor in the XFCE desktop environment. But you know what? When I clicked on it, nothing happened. Mousepad may not even be installed. Calculator. Let me see if Calculator is installed. I guess not. So what we have here probably is this menu that's created here with all these links to apps. And none of these apps are installed on the system, or very few of them. And you know what? I can, I can tell probably a lot of these are not going to be installed. The uh, ISO, again, was under a gig. So I would be shocked if all of these programs were installed on the ISO. Nitrogen to set our wallpaper. That one's installed. And we have a pretty large selection of wallpapers to choose from, actually. Uh, pretty cool stuff. Uh, pretty cool wallpapers. A lot of nature stuff. Wow, I don't even know what to make of that picture. That is scary, though. I really want to change that very quickly. Get that off my screen. <laughs> anyway, some, some cool stuff. Really nice wallpaper pack here included out of the box here in Scion Linux. So uh, our, the theming and stuff, uh, I, I think they kind of get that right. Some pretty cool stuff here. Anyway, back to the applications under accessories. Plank, did they install the Plank dock? No, they didn't. Uh, I'm not sure why you would want Plank and the Tent2 panel, though. So uh, really what, what we would need to do is we would need to install a program such as Menu Maker and have it redo this uh, open box menu for us, get rid of all the uh, the links to programs we don't have, and actually link to all the programs that are installed on the system, because most of this stuff is not even here. So really, I can't even do a proper review of, hey, this is what is installed by default, because I would have to go through this menu and click on every single thing to see if, if it's installed, like GIMP. It's a pretty large program. I know GIMP wasn't on the ISO. If it was under a gig, well, I guess it was. So they did install GIMP. Kind of kind of surprising on that. Let's see what else. Under Internet, Chromium is our web browser. Did we not get a web browser? Okay, well, we have this web browser link here, too, and it has the Chromium logo. You know what? Why don't I open a terminal? Terminator. Okay, they did install the Terminator terminal. And let's just see if Chromium is on here. Chromium, Chromium, I think it's Chromium dash browser. I actually don't ever use Chromium, but uh, it says OpenGL warning failed to connect to host. Make sure 3D acceleration is enabled for this VM. I always tick on 3D acceleration uh, for every virtual machine I create. So that's strange. I'm getting that warning. And looking at my open box settings, yeah, enable 3D acceleration is ticked on. I tick that on for every single VM I, I create. It's always. That's like a one of my standard go-to settings, enable 3D acceleration. So that may be why certain things are not launching. Let's see. Plank. Yeah, apparently Plank and Chromium and a lot of these apps that I say are not launching, they're here. It's just uh, they won't run correctly. 
Because of this OpenGL warning, make sure 3D acceleration is enabled. So I mentioned this is beta software. It's kind of buggy. So most, most of the programs here are not going to launch here in this virtual machine. Just quickly looking over some of the other stuff. Abby Word is our word processor. It's not going to launch, though. That's the only Office program we really have is Abby Word. Under programming, we have the Genie text editor. Now that does launch for us correctly here in this VM. Sound and video. We have PN Mixer, Pulse Audio Volume Control, of course. Simple Screen Recorder is installed by default. That's an interesting choice. I love Simple Screen Recorder. It's actually what I use to make my videos. I'm using it right now to uh, make this video, actually. And VLC is our media player. It's not going to launch. Also under Applications, System, system Tools. Uh, see if the PC Man FM, the File Manager, will launch correctly. It does, so we can at least get to a File Manager, and we can at least open a terminal here. Task Manager. Oh, the Task Manager actually runs too. Let's check out CPU and memory usage. Memory usage is very low, 367 megabytes. That's kind of expected for an open box uh, session. CPU is 1%. That's to be expected too. Not much is running here. All right, let's check the kernel version. 4.4.0, so that's a pretty old kernel. Again, this is based on the LTS release of Ubuntu 1604. One thing I am going to try though, I'm going to go ahead and uh, download some VirtualBox guest editions, see if uh, getting some recent VirtualBox guest editions fixes some of the graphical problems we're having. I'm going to go ahead and run this. Uh, apparently we have to run it as sudo. And I'm not sure if this is going to work, or really I'm not sure what is going on with all the OpenGL and 3D acceleration errors I'm getting. Never actually had this happen in a VM before. So, not to mention the uh, Light DM login manager, of course, wasn't working correctly either. All right, so the guest edition's installed. Let me sudo reboot. I can type correctly. All right, we're logging back in neat little splash screen again see if we ah that fixed the problem all right so pro tip guys go ahead and download the uh, VirtualBox guest editions and install them now we can probably do a little bit more of a proper review all right and we actually have their desktop and they do use the plank dock here they actually have it launching on the side okay so this is starting to make a little bit more sense now uh, I was wondering what was going on before so now all these applications should launch so they're all here calculator for uh, accessories calculator mouse pad nitrogen for our wallpaper plank as our dock screenshot utility we have the synapse uh, run launcher here you just start typing something and it launches, so Chromium. Let's go ahead and launch Chromium. Make sure we have the Chromium browser. It is actually here now. Welcome to Chromium. Not going to sign in to anything. Right, also under graphics, we have our document viewer, font manager, GIMP, which we took a look at, image magic, and view noir, internet, Chromium, and Thunderbird Mail. Transmission is our BitTorrent client. Abby Word for Office. Nothing under other. Programming, we have Genie and some Python stuff, sound and video, then uh, System Tools, App Launcher. App Launcher is going to be their little quick launcher that they put up here. It basically just launches your open box right click menu. And what did I not take a look at earlier? The control panel, because it wouldn't launch. Now it should launch for us. Yeah, and it's your standard. Customize look and feel wallpaper uh, open box settings. The open box settings, I'm assuming, launches the open box configuration manager, and it does. So we have some some different themes to choose from. It looks like the theme they're going with by default is called Mercury Small, which I kind of like. You know, if you like a silvery gray kind of theme, uh, see how this one looks. That one looks pretty good. It's called Mercury. And that's not really sure the difference between mercury and mercury small they both look 
very similar. But you have a lot of other options here to choose from. You have Victory Midnight. Let's see what that one. Victory Medium. Victory Silver. Most of them are very similar. Victory Dark. Oh, that's not really. It's a dark window theme, but the, it's a very light uh, menu theme. Nightmare. Nightmare is okay. I like the Nightmare uh, open box theme. It's pretty cool. Anyway, I'm going to put it back on the default. The default Mercury Small theme. Uh, we have panel settings. This is for our uh, Tent 2 panel. We can change the theme of the Tent 2 panel. I'm just going to leave it with the default. Window effects. Of course, this is for uh, open box. Greeter settings. This is for the Light DM Login Manager. Not going to play around in that. We have screensaver. We have dock settings. This is the plank settings here. Then your standard system settings for time and date, mouse, keyboard, add remove software. Let's check out the add remove software utility. See if it's the standard uh, Ubuntu add remove software. It doesn't launch when I click on it, so that's unfortunate. Uh, so I'm not sure what they're using for like a graphical GUI package manager. Under system tools, there's really nothing here for that sort of thing. Under preferences, Synaptic Package Manager. Okay. Synaptic is good. I like Synaptic. Uh, pretty easy to use. Pretty intuitive. You can search for a program, say Firefox, if you want to install Firefox instead of Chromium. And here you go. You tick that on. Mark for installation. It tells you what's going to be installed. You click Mark. Hit Apply. Hit Apply again. And Firefox is going to be downloaded and installed on your system. Pretty easy. I just let that run for a second. Uh, I think that was the only GUI uh, package manager of any kind. There's no like Ubuntu Software Center or GNOME Software or anything like that here. Uh, no App Grid or anything. Uh, basically, it's Synaptic, which Synaptic works fine. I think even, you know, like newer Linux users would be fine with Synaptic. Of course, you always have the terminal. You can sudo apt, install, whatever. So what do I think of this very brief overview of Scion Linux? Uh, it's okay, but honestly, it's based on Ubuntu 16.04, which is a little old now. It would be better if they base this thing like on the beta of the upcoming 1804, which maybe they're, they're going to do at some point. I don't know. The uh, choice of software, I'm not thrilled about. Uh, I mean, they got some strange choices. Uh, again, I don't know why you would want to use the Plank dock in a minimal desktop environment or window manager like OpenBox. You already got the Tent 2 panel. The Tent 2 panel uh, works fine as both a like a taskbar launch quick launcher sys tray just have the panel get rid of the dock uh you have the synapse uh, quick launcher that's okay but you know what there's really lightweight quick launchers like rofi and d menu out there so synapse is kind of a strange choice to be honest uh for a minimal desktop you install gimp out of the box i love gimp i install it on every machine but maybe you shouldn't put that on your iso uh, internet you went with chromium and firefox well i installed firefox just a minute ago in synaptic so you went with chromium but you went with thunderbird mail for the email client so you installed Mo mozilla thunderbird but you installed chromium for the web browser why not do both mozilla programs office abby word is fine uh, programming genie uh, genie's a fantastic text editor uh, v vlc of course you always go with vlc if you're not a uh, really wanting to stick to like free software because VLC has to use proprietary codecs. Uh, VLC is, is the best video player in Linux. Uh, so, so my verdict is Scion Linux. It's, it's okay. That's it. Uh, I'm not blown away by it, but you know, I, I didn't hate it either, but honestly, if I was going to live like in a Debian based world and use open box, uh, crunch bang plus plus miles better. Uh, Salen OS, the same thing, it's just a far better, more polished product uh, with uh, being Debian based and using OpenBox. The same with Bunsen Labs, even though Bunsen Labs is really getting really old now, they need to really move on to a newer version of Debian. 
And then, of course, all of the Arch-based open box distros, Arch Labs, Arch Merge, and, you know, the bazillion other Arch-based distros that use open box. I think all of them are better. Uh, I mean, this one's okay. It's not horrible, but it, it needs a, a little bit more work done. I also wasn't in, uh, thrilled about uh, the in installation. When you click, uh, go through the install, set up your user and everything, and then you get this very small little box that says it's installing the system. You can't really read anything. There's no output, and the buttons were a little strange in it, but it did seem to install correctly, but then you reboot. You get this black screen. Now, it was fixed by running an update in the Bash shell and also installing the VirtualBox guest editions. You know, that's a little that's a little bit of work. Uh, overall, though, Scion Linux. Check it out, guys. Peace.